What are you seeing? We're seeing a beat on revenue. We're seeing a beat on net income. We're seeing a beat in fixed income trading here. We are seeing loan losses, uh, the provisioning that is higher than what JP Morgan had put in, but again, lower than what analysts expected. So perhaps Wall Street has just gotten it wrong compared to what the banks are expecting in terms of loan losses. Again, they are higher than JP Morgan, so we're going to want to understand why the divergence. But overall, pretty right. clean numbers here by Citigroup. Uh, Shanali, when, as we see the numbers come out, we're getting this, folks right now in real time. Every bank brings them out differently. And J.P. Morgan, I'm going to be blunt. There, I finally, just now, have gotten the research dump from Citigroup, and we'll see what that uh, looks like. But, Shanali, is this Mr. Corbett's bank, or they moved on to new management oh, with this release? they're moving on pretty soon. Mr. Corbett will be around through the end of the year, but we'll see Jane Frazier take over next year. You know, you were talking about Citigroup stock price earlier, more than 46 percent down on the year. Their succession uh, question here as we move to a new guard. Remember, there's already been a lot of change at the top, but there's also questions around regulatory yeah. issues. And we've got, Lisa, the return on equity, 6.7% shows some of those challenges. Return on tangible common equity as well, 7.9%. These are numbers, Lisa, starkly different from the double-digit excellence of J.P. Morgan. Yeah, but they're still making money. And they're making quite a bit of it given their size, and yet they cannot return it to shareholders uh, in the form of buying back shares or paying out dividends based on the Fed's uh, new rules. Shanali, what are they going to do with all this money? <laughs> uh, they're going to use it to improve their return on equity, at least. <laughs> I mean, that number there is still pretty low. Again, it is higher than the second quarter. The return on tangible common equity was about 3% at that time. But it's low compared to J.P. Morgan, which they are competing with. Mr. Corbett, we continue to navigate the the effects of the pandemic extremely well. Credit costs have stabilized. But, Shanali, I see it with a headline off paragraph two of their uh, release. Revenues decreased 7 percent from prior year period. And there's a real question here about bringing it down to the bottom line, net income. Shanali, what is the greatest distinction between Citigroup's operational ability to profit versus something as excellent as J.P. Morgan? Well, one area they're going to have to contend with is their global reach and the issues that the rest of the world is seeing. One area neither of you guys have talked about yet is net interest income and how much pressure that's putting on these banks. Citigroup does not have the same heft in investment banking that J.P. Morgan has. So until they get that heft, they don't have the offset. So this net interest income, that's the one place J.P. Morgan missed expectations, and Citigroup is seeing the pain there as well.